What's up, guys? So, Wizards just released an article regarding War of the Spark spoilers that I thought I would sit down and share with you all. Uh, as a lot of you already know, Wizards has promised War of the Spark will be a set unlike anything we've ever seen before, and they're already dropping a lot of information that backs that up. The biggest thing for players is the release of the 36 unique Planeswalkers in this set, one of which will be in every single pack you open. There are also changes elsewhere with the removal of the MSRP pricing structure, and what promises to be one of the most interesting stories we've seen from a Magic set potentially ever. In order to tell this story, Wizards has employed Greg Wiseman to write a full-on novel for War of the Spark that will be available at the end of April. I'll put a pre-order link down below in case you'd like to go ahead and reserve your copy, you can do that there. In addition to the full story being told through the novel, changes are being made around spoiler season that I have to say I'm actually really intrigued about. Looking at previous spoiler seasons, we usually see a trend of high-powered or hype-building cards coming out early to help build the setup and get people really excited, and then a slew of commons and uncommons that come out all at once kind of after that. Normally this whole process takes about two weeks, and honestly that's always worked well in my opinion, but they are changing things up for this set. So for War of the Spark, they've decided to help tell the story through the spoilers over the course of a three-week period. Starting this weekend with the Mythic Invitational and PAX East, Wizards has decided to release cards in what they are calling Scenes. Each scene is essentially a collection of four to five spoiler cards that represent an important piece of the War of the Spark story. According to this article, these scenes can represent key story points, important locations to the story, or just other important events. The idea behind these scenes is to give a storyboard-like telling of the story behind the set while accomplishing all the normal tasks of a spoiler season like new mechanics and powerful cards. They've said, unlike previous spoilers, we will have more of a mix of cards from the mythic rarity all the way down to the common level just straight out from the start. I see this as a potential problematic change only for the purposes of hype building, but if this set is as great as they are building it up to be, I'm confident that we should be okay on that front. The good thing about doing spoilers this way for hype building is that they can spread out all 36 planeswalkers they have in this set throughout the entire spoiler season if that's what they decide to do. I think that would be a great way to go about this just to keep people engaged each day, so I'm hoping they do something at least similar to that. Regardless of whether planeswalkers are released each day or not though, I do think we will want to see something with big impact on every day. Of course these scenes are based on major story points though, so I don't think that will be a huge issue. They've also told us these scenes will be released in chronological order, which plays into the storytelling aspect a little bit more. I'm hoping that presenting spoilers as a storytelling tool actually get more people invested in the story overall. Obviously this set is meant to be the end of a huge conflict, so I imagine a lot of people will be really invested already, but anything wizards can do to help build that up seems like a great idea to me. Overall, I'm pretty stoked to see how this pans out. I'm excited to see wizards thinking through every step of the process from a marketing standpoint, Giving spoiler season more meaning by using a storytelling mechanic just makes it feel that much more special as a player. Again, this is the big ending to this story arc, so it's nice to see them pulling out all the stops to make it great. As long as they're releasing good cards each day, I think the spoiler structure will be a huge success. The other thing alluded to in this article is the end. Of course, we know this is the end of the big story arc, but they're definitely talking about something a little more specific here. They don't actually give us any information on this, so we are left speculating a bit on what this could be. My theory is the end references a number of different things. Considering this is an all-out war, the end could easily reference the end of a number of planeswalkers in the set, Nicol Bolas included. Tons of videos have already been made talking about which planeswalkers are expected to die, and we've even talked a little bit about that on the podcast a couple weeks back. I also think this could be a reference to the end of the Gatewatch as we know it. Again, I don't believe this is a big surprise. There's bound to be conflicts that could cause fracture there, so I would not be surprised about that. Most importantly, I think this will be the end of Nicol Bolas. While there may be a few scrapes along the way, I think Wizards will of course let the good guys win. We already know based on comics by IDW that Chandra returns home and Ajani survives the conflict, so I have to imagine the outcome can't favor Nicol Bolas. Whatever the end really references, I think it's safe to say this set will be one for the history books, hopefully for the story and the cards being printed. We will do our best to keep you up to date on the spoilers as they come out on Instagram and Twitter, so I highly recommend following us there if you're not already. If you enjoyed this video, we would really appreciate a like or a comment down below, and of course please make sure to subscribe and turn that bell on for notifications on every new video we post. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next video.